Hi everyone, my name is Philippe Diodet. I'm a rheumatologist, head of the rheumatology department of the University Hospital uh, Bichat Claude Bernard in Paris, France. And I'm uh, really happy to give you this talk about screening for RA ILD. This first slide is just a short reminder on RA ILD with four key points. First, RA ILD is frequent. Uh, with less than 10% of patients having symptoms, at least for rheumatologists, and close to a quarter having a subclinical disease uh, when assessing the patients by using chest HRCT scan. The second point is the heterogeneity as illustrated by the HRCT patterns with at least two patterns, UIP, a fibrotic pattern, and non-UIP, a more inflammatory patterns. The third key point is the severity with a high mortality rate in patients with ILD when compared to patients without ILD. And last is progressive. This disease is progressive in 40 to 50 percent of the patients and this is a really important point. What about the knowledge in RA ILD by physician in 2021? So here are the findings of an internal survey which are quite interesting. More than a quarter of the rheumatologists underestimate the prevalence of ILD in RA. Many still use chest X-ray as a screening tool. More than 40 persons do not initiate screening for ILD in presence of multiple risk factors in asymptomatic patients. And 60 persons of the physician respond to avoid metotrexate in presence of ILD. And more surprisingly, rheumatologists are less likely to initiate collaboration with pulmonologists when there is evidence of strong suspicion of ILD. So there is a lot of work to be done to improve uh, the knowledge uh, in RA ILD. So now let's talk about the screening for RAILD. Here is the WHO definition, just to remind you that screening is related to identify people in apparently healthy population who are at high risk of health problem or condition. In other words, screening is related to asymptomatic patients. So why screening for asymptomatic RAILD is relevant? The answer is coming from the study. As you can see here, the diagnosis delay for ILD increases mortality in patients with RA. If you see the curve in orange, in patients having a delay of more than 24 months, the survival is very severe compared with patients in green, which will have a diagnosis delay of less than 12 months. And as you can see, similar to IPF, the diagnosis delay was an independent predictor of mortality with an hazard ratio of 1.11. So, regarding the unmet needs uh, about screening for RA ILD, there is three quick questions. Who, when and how? Who is at most at risk of developing RA ILD? When? When is the optimal time to screen for RA ILD? And how? How can ILD be detected? So uh, we will try to answer the first question, who, which relies to the identification of risk factors. Risk factors can be divided into ma two main subsets. First, risk factor related to RA, subphenotype, disease activity, treatments, and on the other hand, risk factor related to the individual sex, age, environment and genetics. So here are the risk factors related to the individual and were identified as independent risk factor for RA ILD, male sex, older age at RA onset with a mean difference close to 10 years when between patients with RA ILD when compared to patients without ILD, smoking, obesity, 
and carrying the risk factor MOC5B, which is a genetic variant, and this association is restricted to the UIP HRCT pattern. As you can see in this slide, MOC5B is also a strong risk factor for incident ILD. This is coming from the Fingen study. And you can see the hazard ratio for patients carrying the risk factor is relatively high, close to 10. Uh, and you can see here in the curves, in purple, the patients having RA carrying the risk allele, and in yellow, the patient with RA not carrying the risk allele. So the incidence is quite high for patients carrying the risk allele of MUG5B. Having said that, as we are looking for tools for screening and risk factors for screening, these uh, studies of the most interest providing evidence uh, for an association of MUG5B and subclinical ILD. This is coming from the group of Denver. And as you can see here, the odds ratio is 2.49, suggesting that MUG5B could be a good biomarker for identifying ILD in patients with RA without any respiratory symptoms. So what about the risk factors related to RA were identified as independent risk factor for RA ILD, a high disease activity. I will show you this in the next slide. There is no clear relation between the seropositive of rheumatoid factor and ACPA and the risk of ILD in patients with RA. And clearly, we can say now that metotrexate is not guilty. So, um, maybe this is the most interesting study providing a strong evidence uh, um, for an association between RA activity and the occurrence of ILD in patients with RA. Like for an other extraarticular manifestation of RA, RA activity is associated with incident ILD with a linear effect as you can see in this slide. Metotrexate has been considered for a long time as the usual suspects regarding RA ILD and uh, today we can say that metotrexate is not a risk factor. This is coming from uh, two studies. The first is coming from the UK. It's a retrospective analysis of our RA cohort. And uh, the authors found that metotrexate acts with a protective effect regarding incident ILD. The second study is coming from my group. It's an international study, a case control study. As you can see, in all the population, we also found a protective effect of the mug 5 b regarding the risk of ILD. Anyway, the design of both studies being retrospective, we cannot say that this is a protective factor, but at least this is not a risk factor for ILD. The second message is both studies found that significant, a significant delayed occurrence of ILD in metotrexate users, suggesting that maybe metotrexate could act with a protective effect. So having identified some independent risk factor for ILD, um, the idea is, is to develop a uh, risk score for the next future to be able to uh, identify those patients being at high risk of, of, of ILD. So here are the considerations for a successful and widely accepted risk score for ILD in patients with RA. First, the first question is, is it designed to identify high risk patients eligible to HRCT? The second point is the high feasibility. Based on data, ideally available in the clinic, available at baseline. The third question is, does it have sufficient sensitivity? And of course, can it be widely applied to all populations? So uh, let's see now the results coming from studies providing risk of for RALD. This first study is coming from Argentina. It's a case control study, unfortunately, including only symptomatic patients. So this is not answering really the question for screening. Anyway, as you can see in this uh, slide, the authors identify the activity of RA by the CDI as being an independent risk factor, the presence of extra articular manifestation, male sex, smoking, and also 
elevated ESR with a, a performance of the score being quite good. Unfortunately, there is no replication, independent replication available for the score. And unfortunately, this risk score has not been investigated in asymptomatic patients. Uh, this slide to share with you uh, some findings coming from my group um, that were presented in the last two meeting. Um, this is a cross-sectional study of a cohort of patients with RA. Uh, among these patients, 163 patients underwent HRCT scan, and we found a subclinical ILD in 90% of these patients. As you can see here, uh, we identify as independent risk factor for subclinical ILD, the MUC5B T-risk allele. We found the male sex as an independent risk factor, age at RA onset, and finally, the DAS28 ESR, uh, in other words, the activity of RA. So we derived from this uh, risk factor a risk score, uh, and uh, we provided also, uh, we tested uh, this risk score in an independent uh, population. Here are the findings. You can see uh, both uh, performance, uh, the performance of the risk score in both population, the discovery population and the replication population with a very similar curve and quite good performance with an array under the curve of more than 0.80. Here is the risk matrix for the risk score in the discovery population and as, as we can see this risk matrix is allowing a good stratification of the patients at high risk and low risk of ILE. When screening should be performed is a really a not but need and a challenging question because uh, we don't really know the natural history of ILE in patients with RA. Um, we have some clues regarding the data coming from registry, for example, the data coming from the nation, Danish National Registry. And of interest, as you can see in this slide, a significant proportion of patients had ILD before RA, thus suggesting that maybe uh, the screening could be performed at the early stage of RA. Anyway, the optimal time for screening is unknown and remains to be determined by prospective studies. So um, now let's see the tools that can allow us to identify patients having subclinical ILE. So here are the consideration for a successful and widely accepted screening tool for ILE in patients with RA. First, is it designed to identify high risk patients eligible to HRCT, the high feasibility, cost effective, does it have sufficient sensitivity again, and can it be widely applied to all population? So uh, just uh, to remind you that to date HRCT should be considered as the gold standard allowing both diagnosis with a preclinical detection, subclinical detection, and also informing the prognosis of the disease uh, by both qualitative analysis, allowing the classification of patients having at least UIP or non-UIP disease, the quantitative analysis, in other words, the extent of the ILD. Nonetheless, this is uh, not really cost-effective and also exposing patients to ionizing radiations. So what about PFTs as a screening tool? Um, today the relevance remains to be determined. There are only two studies uh, suggesting that a low DLCO would be an independent risk factor and could be of uh, interest to uh, identify patients having preclinical ILD. Uh, as you can see here, the rock curve is quite interesting with a very uh, high area under the curve. Uh, in this retrospective study, uh, including more than 150 patients. And as you can see here, 20% of the patients had subclinical ILD. Ultrasonography could also uh, be uh, of interest. Uh, here are the results coming from a meta-analysis, including 11 studies of CTD ILD with close to 500 patients, 
most of them having RA ILD. As you can see here, the pooled sensitivity was quite high of 0.86. Last, the East stethoscope. Uh, this is a study coming from a group of Italy, the Vector study, with 137 patients with RA who underwent HRCT scan. And as you can see here, the sensitivity was very high and suggesting that East stethoscope could be also a good tool to uh, detect preclinical ILD. So to summarize, here is a, a picture for proposal strategy for rheumatoid arthritis interstitial lung disease screening. First, the risk stratification, are we able to identify patients at high risk of ILD? The answer is yes, we have uh, already identified several biomarkers and risk factors and uh, maybe in the next future we will have several risk or maybe allowing us to uh, identify those patients that are eligible to a chest HRCT scan. Anyway, some tools could be also used to uh, increase uh, the sensibility for the, de so for the detection of subclinical IL, including low-dose CT scan, lung ultrasonography, e-stethoscope, and other maybe biomarkers. Anyway, when this patient will be suspected to have ILD, they should go to the chest HRCT scan again that allows the diagnosis and also informs prognosis. And lastly, I would like to say that all these patients having RA ILD should be managed uh, in a multidisciplinary form by including our colleagues uh, pulmonologists. Thank you for your attention.